So now we're going to solve the exact same problem as we did in the short run, but we're no longer going to assume that the capital stock is given to us and equal to 1. We delete that. And now we have a long run problem to solve. In the long run, all inputs are flexible and can be chosen. So let's break it down like we do. Here's our basic profit function. And we let's substitute in our production function here. Well, let's just substitute everything at once. So the price is 10. Q is equal to K to the 1 fourth times L to the 1 fourth. W is equal to 15 times L plus 30 times K. And now we're not going to substitute out these Ks because we have to choose it. We have to find the amount of capital that is optimal. We found that if you used one unit of capital, you made negative $25 or so that's not going to be the optimal solution. Presumably, you can do better than that. So now we need to find our two first order conditions. First, we take the one with respect to labor. And we got to take the partial derivative of this guy with respect to labor. So we bring the 1 fourth down. We have 10 times k to the 1 fourth. We leave those guys alone. The k we just treat like a number, remember, when we're taking a partial derivative. And we subtract 1 from the exponent minus 15, set that equal to 0. Okay, 15 times L, the derivative of that is just 15. Notice this is the same as last time, except we have this k to the 1 fourth out in front. We couldn't get rid of it like we did last time. Now we're going to take the derivative with respect to capital. we got to move the 1 fourth in front. We've got 10. And we subtract 1 from the exponent on k, and we get negative 3 fourths. And we have L to the 1 fourth minus the derivative of 30 times k, which is 30. And we set that equal to 0. All right, two big ugly equations to solve. This is one of those situations where uh, dividing one equation by the other seems like it would be a nightmare, but it actually makes your solution much easier. And the other thing to remember is that we're going to need to use both of these equations to solve this. There's two, two unknown variables, so we're not going to be able to solve this using just one of the equations. So let's do this combination trick, and I'll show you why it makes our life a little easier. We have 1 fourth, 10, k to the 1 fourth, l to the negative 3 fourths. And we're going to divide by, well, first let's say that's equal to 15 because we add 15 to both sides. On this side, we have 1 fourth times 10 times k to the negative 3 fourths times l to the 1 fourth. And that's equal to uh, 30 if we add the 30 to both sides. And we're going to divide sort of the one equation by the other. And you can see immediately that this gets rid of a lot of junk. Okay, These 1 fourths are gone. These tens are gone. Okay. We have to be very careful here, but if we do it right, we get something very simple. k to the 1 fourth divided by k to the negative 3 fourths times l to the negative 3 fourths over l to the 1 fourth is equal to 15 over 30 is 1 half. Okay? So remember, if you have an exponent with a negative, if you have a negative exponent, you can flip it either above the uh, divisor or below uh, and take the positive one. So k dividing by k to the negative 3 fourths is the same as multiplying by k to the 3 fourths. On the denominator, we have l to the 1 fourth. And if we have l to the negative 3 fourths in the numerator, that's equivalent to dividing by l to the positive 3 fourths. K to, now we have two k's on the top and two k's on the bottom, and we're just going to add the exponents up. So 1 fourth plus 3 fourths is just 1, so this is just k. And 1 fourth plus 3 fourths on the bottom is just l. Okay? Isn't that nice? So we go through all, we start with these big ugly things, and we end up with a very nice simple equation that k divided by l is equal to 1 half. We can use that equation to get a relationship between k and l. So let's solve for k. And we find that k is going to equal 1 half of l. Okay. Now we can just take this information, 
plug it into either one of these two. Our choice, solve for uh, L, and we'll get L. And then we come back down here, and we know that K is equal to a half of whatever that answer is, and that's how we solve the problem. So we just have to be careful here. So let's get rid of the K in this lower one, I guess. I don't know why I chose that. No, let's, yeah, okay, whatever. We've, we've committed. How do I get my cursor back? There we are. Just need some room. All right, so we have 1 fourth times 10. And instead of k, we're going to substitute in 1 half l to the negative 3 fourths power times l to the 1 fourth. And we said that's equal to 30, because if you add 30 to both sides. We now have 1 fourth times 10, which is 10 divided by 4. It's going to be 2 and a half. And we can distribute this exponent to each of these terms in here. So we have 1 half to the negative 3 fourths power, L to the negative 3 fourths power, and then we still have this L to the 1 fourth power. Okay? L to the negative 3 fourths times L to the 1 fourth, we add the exponents together. We now have 10 over 4 times 1 half to the negative 3 fourths times L to the negative one half equals 30. Okay? Let's multiply both sides by L to the one half. We add these exponents and these two terms cancel out. Then let's divide each side by 30. And now these cancel out over here and we've got L to the one half power is equal to a big ugly mess of numbers. 10 over 4 times one half to the negative 3 fourths, all divided by 30. Last but not least, we need to get rid of this exponent, so we square both sides. And we'll have L is equal to 10 over 4, 1 half, negative 3 fourths, 30 squared. That's a calculator problem. I calculate that to be uh, where's my cursor? 0 0.0196. K is equal to 1 half of that level. So that means that K is equal to... So we do all that. We get uh, L equal to 0 0.0196. When we run the math, K is 1 half that. So this is, is oops, 0 0.0098. Come back. All right, disappeared again. All right, so now we've got capital and labor. All right, this is the profit maximizing levels. And if we wanted to, we can figure out the profit that this guy gets. So let's do that. His total profit is equal to $10 per unit sold. The capital that he uses is 0 0.0098 to the one-fourth power times 0 0.0196, that's his labor, to the one-fourth power, minus 15 times 0 0.0196, minus 30, that's the cost of capital, times 0 0.0098, okay? Notice that this person is using more labor than capital because labor is cheaper, but it's just as productive. They both are raised to the one-fourth power. Let's see what they get. So I get that when I run this through a calculator that the total revenues are 1.178 and the cost of labor is 15 times 0 0.0196, which is 0.294. The cost of capital is 30 times 0 0.0098, which is also uh, 0 0.294. And when you put all this together, you get that his profits are 0 0.059 which is higher, much higher, than his loss of 25 in the last example where he wasn't allowed to choose capital and it was stuck at one, okay? So this is how you solve these problems. You take the first order conditions, you solve for, you solve the resulting system of equations, and then you use that to get capital and labor. And if you need to know the actual profit, you can plug that into the original profit function to figure out 
how much profit they get. It's a little bit tedious, and the biggest error is just not getting lost in the math, not making little typos, but you know, that's the system that you use, okay?